There has been a vicious battle going on between Epic Games, the creators of Fortnite, and Apple, who are famous for being, well, Apple. And just recently, a judge made a decision that could shape the future of Fortnite and the App Store itself forever. If you go to the App Store today, you'll find millions of games, but over a year after its removal, you still won't find Fortnite. And now, you're unlikely to, for a very long time. Look, this kind of legal stuff is interesting, it can shape the entire games industry, but at times it can be quite heavy reading, so make sure you're subscribed to The Score Esports, then you'll see us break down all that stuff into nice videos like this. It's that simple. Subscribe. All right, now before we get into this, you might be a bit hesitant to watch a video that is about Fortnite, but don't worry, even if you don't play it, it doesn't matter. This battle is defining what a video game is, how microtransactions happen in games, and how games themselves are distributed. So, to figure out where things went so sour between these two companies, we have to go back to 2018. That's the year that Fortnite launched on the iOS platform, which every app developer has to use if they want to get their product into the hands of Apple users. Initially, things went incredibly well for Epic. Within five months of launch, App Store tracker Apptopia was reporting that Fortnite had reached 100 million downloads on the platform and made over $160 million in in-app purchase revenue. Things seemed to go well for a while, but Epic got restless. You see, Apple has a policy when it comes to any transactions that take place on the App Store. They take 30%. And Apple's reasoning is simple here. It's their platform, so they want a slice of any pie that's being bought or sold on it. That 30% cut is actually pretty standard in the industry. Steam does it for their games, and Google does it too for apps that have made over a million dollars. Now, while the vast majority of developers have accepted this, Epic got tired of having to share their Fortnite pie every time an iOS user bought a new skin, pickaxe, or emote. So, in August 2020, Epic secretly introduced a new feature into the iOS version of Fortnite that would allow people to pay them directly when purchasing V-Bucks. Apple wouldn't get a cut of any transaction that happened this way. They even announced a mega drop where players could get a 20% discount if they purchased V-Bucks directly from Epic, but said they couldn't offer the same discount to those who paid through Apple or Google's payment methods because of the 30 percent cut they took. I mean, at first glance, this does look like a bit of a petty squabble between big companies arguing over the average person's cash. And maybe you'll only ever see it that way, and that's fair, but these legal proceedings have brought up some pretty interesting documents from over the years. For example, take this 2015 email from Epic Games founder and CEO Tim Sweeney to Apple CEO Tim Cook stating that, quote, it doesn't seem tenable for Apple to be the sole arbiter of expression and commerce over an app platform approaching a billion users. And at the top there, you can see Tim Cook forwarding the email and asking if Tim Sweeney was the guy at one of their rehearsals. That was six years ago, and over two years before Fortnite was released. And it's not just Apple that Tim's been arguing with either. In 2017, he spoke out against Steam for a similar reason, arguing they could be profitable with just an 8% cut from in-game transactions instead of 30. It does seem like open distribution has been a passion of Tim Sweeney's, and by extension Epic Games, for longer than this battle with Apple has been going on for. But let's get back to that battle, shall we? By sneaking this update into Fortnite, Epic Games had essentially circumvented Apple's entire App Store business model, and unsurprisingly, they were pretty pissed. On August 13th, Apple removed Fortnite from the App Store. Epic then immediately hit back by filing a lawsuit in which they sought injunctive relief to allow for fair competition. In the 65-page lawsuit, Epic laid out their complaint that Apple had monopolized the distribution and monetization of software such as Fortnite. Then, on August 28, 2020, Apple terminated Epic's account on the App Store, and with it, users' abilities to download any of their games. 
In a statement, Apple said, We are disappointed that we have had to terminate the Epic Games account on the App Store. We have worked with the team at Epic Games for many years on their launches and releases. The court recommended that Epic comply with the App Store guidelines while their case moves forward. Guidelines they followed for the past decade until they created this situation. Epic has refused. Instead, they repeatedly submit Fortnite updates designed to violate the guidelines of the App Store. This is not fair to all other developers on the App Store and is putting customers in the middle of their fight. We hope that we can work together again in the future, but unfortunately, that is not possible today. And in a move of unquestionable pettiness, Apple also made Fortnite's rival PUBG their featured app of the day on the App Store. They followed this up with a countersuit of their own against Epic, claiming the company had breached its contract with the App Store and that, quote, their conduct threatened the very existence of the iOS ecosystem. So, the stage was set. In May 2021, the trial began, and over the course of three weeks, it went to some pretty interesting places. One of the topics discussed was actually Roblox. Yes. Roblox. Apple tried to argue that Roblox was an experience, whereas Fortnite was strictly a game. This would have helped Apple argue that they've been consistent with the App Store rules regarding games. Contrary to that, Epic tried to argue that Fortnite wasn't a game, but rather an experience, in the hopes that the trial would shift away from games to the wider App Store in general, where they'd have better grounds to fight Apple. During this trial, and because of this discussion, Roblox decided to rebrand their whole game as an experience creation tool instead of a gaming platform in an effort to avoid breaking Apple's rules. On September 10th, 2021, the judge in this case finally came to a decision, but just like everything else in this story, the decision was complex. The 185-page ruling broadly sided with Apple. Near the beginning, the judge surmises that, quote, success is not illegal. The final trial record did not include evidence of other critical factors, such as barriers to entry and conduct decreasing output or decreasing innovation in the relevant market. The court does not find that it is impossible. Only the Epic Games failed in its burden to demonstrate Apple is an illegal monopolist. The notion of success not being illegal is something that Apple were quick to jump on in their public statement after the ruling, adding that contrary to Epic Games' accusations of them being a monopolist, they actually face rigorous competition in every segment in which they do business. The judge ruled that Epic would have to pay damages to Apple for the loss of the 30% cut they would have got from in-game Fortnite purchases in the three months before the game was removed from the App Store. 30% of their $12.1 million revenue during that time meant that Epic would have to fork over around $3.65 million to Apple, and that wasn't even all of their damages. So, was that it then? Can we all go home? Did Apple win? Well, not quite. If you remember, I said that the judge broadly sided with Apple, but in one key area, they didn't. The ruling came with a single injunction for Apple, an order for them to open up payment options to every developer on the App Store. This was massive. It might not have been everything Epic Games was looking for, but it was a huge part of it. The judge had agreed with them that they and others had the right to implement their own payment systems in any of their apps on the App Store. Apple had been given 90 days to comply with the order. The ball was now in their court. On Twitter, Tim Sweeney said that Fortnite would return to the iOS store when they would be allowed to offer their own in-app payment for the game and also memed a little bit about using Apple pay for the six million dollars they've been ordered to pay. But the dust didn't have long to settle on all of this because on September 22nd, Tim Sweeney took to Twitter yet again to share another twist in the story. He said, Apple lied. Apple spent a year telling the world, the court and the press they'd welcome Epic's return to the App Store if they agreed to play by the same rules as everyone else. Epic agreed, and now Apple has reneged in another abuse of its monopoly power over a billion users. He then shares an alleged email he'd sent to Apple executive Phil Schiller, in which he tells him that Epic will adhere to Apple's guidelines, that they've paid the damages, and that they're willing to bring Fortnite back to iOS once once Apple follows the court order to allow them to include alternative purchasing mechanisms within Fortnite. 
This was followed by what Tim Sweeney alleges to be an email from Apple dated September 22nd. The email essentially used the court's rulings to back up the decision that Apple have made that Fortnite would not be returning to the App Store until, quote, the district court's judgment becomes final and unappealable. Tim Sweeney said that this blacklisting meant that Apple could go through every appeal process in order to delay the court order, which could take up to five years. So, where the hell are we now then? Well, both sides had rulings that went in their favor, and both sides will be appealing the rulings that didn't go in their favor. That's fairly normal. The appeals process is part of the justice system, but it means that after over a year of fighting that got incredibly petty at times, we still don't have a resolution. We may still have to wait to see how the Apple vs Epic fight ends, but either way, the repercussions could be huge. Even that single injunction that compels Apple to allow developers to have their own in-app purchase systems could have a massive effect. The App Store is one of Apple's biggest assets. The profits they make on those 30% transaction cuts are absurdly big. Will we see the end of that in the future? Will Epic continue to suffer for every day that Fortnite isn't on the App Store? Only time will tell. One thing's for sure, both of these companies will go down swinging rebrand their whole game as an experience creation tool. <laughs> Why I said like that? <laughs> an experience creation tool. <laughs> as like a like, football comment commentator from the 80s. Well, not quite. Remember, <clears throat> well, not quite. <clears throat> so, was that it then? Did, so, was that it then? Did every, what? me, come on. <laughs> so, was that it then? Can we all go home? Did Apple win? Well, f***ing hell, what do I say? Well, not quite.